Hi, I'm Dr. David Atley. In today's demonstration, we're going to be looking at Kepler's laws and what they tell us about the behaviors of planets as they travel along their orbits. To do that, we're going to be using the planetary motion simulator from Nap Labs. Let's get started. All right, I've got my Nap Labs window open. I'm going to come over here to planetary orbits and I'm going to choose the planetary orbit simulator. And that'll pop up this window that shows a random planet in orbit around a star. Kepler's laws tell us some really important things both about the shape of planetary orbits and also about the way planets travel along their orbits. And in this demonstration we're going to be focusing on the first and second laws. Kepler's third law is a little bit odd, um, so it's better demonstrated in a live classroom so we can go through the math and all of that. But the first two laws work just fine in the simulator. First, let's look at what the first law says about the shape of planetary orbits. Kepler's first law tells us that planets travel along elliptical orbits. An ellipse is basically a stretched out circle. And when you stretch that circle, instead of getting one center, you end up with two different centers that we call foci. So it's one focus, two foci. So let's imagine a perfectly circular orbit. Then those two foci overlap, and that's the center of the circle. But once we start stretching out that circle, they're going to break, and they're going to separate from one another along the long direction of the orbit. So I'll start to increase the eccentricity, stretchedness, of the orbit, and you'll notice those two foci, one where the sun is, and one empty one, which is just there to make the math work, and you'll notice them move apart from one another. And if I stretch out the orbit a lot, they get really, really far apart. This is way more stretched than the orbit for any planet in our solar system. Even Mercury, the planet with the most stretched out orbit, isn't actually all that stretched out. You'll see that the Sun and the focus in Mercury's orbit are pretty close to one another and you really need the marking to be able to tell. If I hide that, that orbit looks pretty circular and you have to look pretty closely to realize that the Sun isn't really in the center, it's off-center a little bit at one focus. Okay, so let's go back to my really stretched out example orbit. The other important feature of a circle is its radius. Unlike a circle, which all points on the circle are the same distance from the center, that clearly is not true in this ellipse. And instead, an ellipse has two important sizes. It's got the distance along the long direction, which we call the major axis, and then the distance along the short direction, which we call the minor axis. And in planets, the major axis is going to be really important, and in particular, the semi-major axis, so half of that long direction. The semi-major axis is the average distance between the planet and the sun, and it's going to have a really important role when you learn about Kepler's third law. So keep this semi-major axis in the back of your head for when we go over this in class. You've already heard about the semi-major axis of Earth's orbit. I've told you there's a really special name for the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. Can you think of what it is? If not, go back, check your notes. When we talked about special astronomical distances, I gave you a name for the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. If you can't remember, go look it up. So this is what Kepler's first law is telling us, is that planets travel along orbits that look like this one. It's a stretched out circle with the Sun at one focus, another focus empty, and an important distance that we call the semi-major axis. Let's move on now and look at what the second law is telling us. 
Kepler's second law says that a planet sweeps out equal areas in equal times as it travels along its orbit. So I'm going to tell the simulator to sweep out equal areas continuously once I start the simulation. And it's going to sweep out colored areas once I start the planet moving. Each one of these colored wedges that's showing up inside the planetary orbit has the same geometric area. So if this was a pie and we sliced it up according to these colored bands, you could take any one of those slices of pie and you get exactly the same amount of delicious filling. Now, if you like the crust, then maybe some pieces are better than others, but you get the same amount of apple or pumpkin or pecans or whatever your favorite pie is. Now, what is this really telling us about the behavior of a planet as it travels along this orbit? If you're looking closely, you might already have noticed. When the planet is close to the sun, over here, near these big fat wedges, it's traveling really quickly. But when the planet is far from the sun, over on the other side, near these thin wedges, it's traveling much more slowly. Planets speed up and slow down as they travel along their orbits. Planets travel quickly when they're close to the sun, and much more slowly when they're far from the sun. I've really exaggerated this effect with this particular orbit because I cranked the eccentricity up so high, but less eccentric orbits, the effect is much less pronounced. Play around with the eccentricity. Maybe even use the presets to look at the orbits of different planets. Compare Mercury and the Earth and see how their orbits are similar to and different from one another. Mess around with this simulator, try and develop some intuition for what these different laws are telling you about planetary behavior and what it means for a planet to obey Kepler's laws. Have fun, and I'll see you in class.